1945. And the war was one million men old. Hang on, kid. Keep your eyes shut tight and drink. They're moving you back now. Don't give up. Just hang on. The road back is bumpy and maybe the pain blurs your eyes. But listen. The sound of battle grows dim. And now one question cuts clearly through the haze. Which man will you be? The one who gets hurt and dies? Or the one who gets hurt and lives? When the dizziness stopped, when the fog cleared, an army nurse was at your side. A woman who meant safety and comfort and home to thousands of men before you. A woman who meant all those things to you. A nurse brought another American's blood to your side to pour new strength into your veins. A nurse handed clamps to the surgeon and counted sponges. A nurse prepared and administered the anesthetic and watched you constantly for any telltale change in your breathing or blood pressure. All working with the same purpose, to ease the pain of war, to help save lives. The preparation for the moment that would bring the army nurse to your side began months before back home in the United States. After three years of professional schooling, the nurses were given four weeks of basic training. In those early days, perhaps the nurse wondered why she had to sit through seemingly endless classes and submit to rigid discipline. Often, while muscles ached and groaned, she may have wondered why it was necessary to take those long hikes or grope her way through a gassed area. Yet there were demands that would require of her perfect physical health and stamina, the strength to stand up under the rigors of combat nursing. Four weeks of basic training finished, the army nurse was ready to serve wherever the army needed her most. She might have found herself stationed in a general hospital right here at home, or perhaps assigned to a mobile hospital unit overseas. After she arrived, she may have helped to build the very hospital in which she worked. For the field hospital or the evacuation hospital, like a circus, had to be able to pack up and move on at a moment's notice. Its primary function was to offer immediate surgical treatment to the wounded, and that meant following ever-changing battle lines. Everyone pitched in when a mobile hospital went up, enlisted men, doctors, and nurses. Just one small instance where basic training paid off. Those muscles, toughened and hardened during the four weeks of basic back home, were equal to the job. In the field, the army nurse lived roughly and worked gently. There was no glamour, and her life was far from spectacular. She slept under hastily pitched canvas, on a GI cot, under GI blankets. She trained her mind to act as an alarm clock, because time was important. A wasted moment might have meant a wasted life. She lived a life completely stripped of luxuries, and yet she asked for no more luxury than a patient smile when his pain was eased. She ate regular GI rations, the same as the rest of the army, and often at irregular times. The hours were long and the demands never ending. And as a result, the nurse learned to make use of every moment of her off-duty time. She might not have chosen a GI helmet to wear to her kid sister's wedding, but it made up for its lack of style by its versatility. It was a beauty parlor, laundry, cooking pot, wash basin, all rolled up into one. A little community in size seven. She spent some of her time writing letters. Not the having a wonderful time, wish you were here kind, but letters filled with all the drama of her days, with stories of the courage and spirit of the men over whom she watched. A few moments could always be found for prayer. 
others for lounging about, talking of home. She may have longed to wear the evening dress sent from home, but probably only had the chance to talk about it. Usually, she wore olive drab or battle gray. Her uniform at all times was her badge of service. But however she spent her off-duty time, she was always eager to return to the hospital where the wounded were fighting for their lives. For first and foremost, and at all times, she was a nurse, offering professional and skilled care to the sick and wounded. A nurse first, a woman second, and an officer third might well serve as the slogan for every member of the nurses' corps. Complete recovery of the patient in war or peace depends not only upon the use of drugs, but on the skill with which they are administered and the care that follows. The nurse must be capable of recognizing at once any symptoms in her patients which demand immediate treatment. Because if serious consequences are to be avoided, medical treatment must be on hand the moment any symptoms appear. Professionally skilled and capable, in her there is the tenderness of all women, of mother and sister and friend. Her voice and touch lend encouragement, instill hope. It's the surgeon who saves a man's life. It's the nurse whose tender care helps him to live.